So our next speaker is going to be Mr. Fadel. He's coming from Stockholm, and uh, he will tell us about something about nano diamonds for drug delivery. And we, again, we hear something about pancreatic cancer, clinical need still unmet. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by thanking the organizers, and, and of course, in particular, Beat Löffler for the kind invitation. Um, it's always a pleasure to come to, to Basel and, and attend these CLINAM meetings. What I'd like to do today in this very short presentation is to present some preliminary in vitro results on nanodiamonds um, for drug delivery in, in uh, pancreatic cancer models. And uh, just uh, as a, a way of brief background, as, as you all know, pancreatic uh, adenocarcinoma remains one of the most difficult to treat cancers. Um, this has been uh, nicely reviewed by Scott McNeil and, and uh, colleagues at USNCL. The reference uh, uh, is seen at the bottom of this slide. And, and uh, the authors uh, of this review nicely covered uh, the different ways in which nanomedicine uh, approaches might be uh, applied to, to address uh, pancreatic cancer uh, treatment in particular, and how uh, such approaches alone or in combination with, with uh, uh, conventional agents might be used to overcome the pathophysiological barriers. Um, the illustration here shows the, the effect that, uh, that we have uh, a stromal fortress, if you like, surrounding the tumor cells, and we heard uh, previously uh, about this in previous talks. Just to give one example of, of the promising use of nanomedicine in pancreatic cancer, um, this is the uh, paper cited at the uh, bottom left of this slide from uh, Professor Andre Nell and, and other colleagues at UCLA, uh, just published in JCI, in which uh, uh, indeed a combination of a tumor-penetrating peptide plus, in this case, uh, um, lipid bilayer mesoporous silica particles were used um, to deliver uh, therapy uh, in pancreatic cancer. Um, the focus of my talk is, as I said, on nanodiamonds, and this has been nicely reviewed in Science Advances a few years ago by Dean Ho and colleagues. The reference is at the bottom of this slide. Nanodiamonds have several um, very interesting properties that make them potentially very promising materials in, in nanomedicine. And uh, the, what is illustrated here, for instance, are these. Uh, uh, the fact that they are not spherical, they are fa multifaceted particles, and, and uh, due to their particular properties, this allows for very favorable um, drug absorption um, capacity and, and favorable uh, a formation of, of aggregates of favorable sizes, I, I should say, for, for drug delivery. Um, and this is a, a cartoon from a commentary in Science Translational Medicine. This is already five years ago now. Um, this was a commentary on a paper from Dean Ho and colleagues. Uh, and, and this was a study where, where the authors used nanodiamonds conjugated with doxorubicin and showed that this could be used to overcome drug resistance. So free drug, as shown in this uh, slide, um, has a, a tendency uh, in cancer cells overexpressing multidrug resistance proteins to be effluxed out from the cell, uh, whereas uh, uh, doxorubicin conjugated with nanodiamonds does not efflux, and instead you have a, a retention of the drug within the cell and release within the cell. Um, the authors of this study used uh, animal models of both uh, liver cancer and breast cancer, and uh, we were inspired by these studies and also um, by the fact that our uh, toxicity screening of multiple different nanomaterials showed that nanodiamonds were um, by far the, the um, least cytotoxic of all the materials we have tested to date, in fact. So uh, the hypothesis behind our study, uh, as stated here, is to see whether we could use nanodiamonds conjugated to, to anti-cancer drugs uh, for treatment in pancreatic cancer. And what we decided to do is to compare conventional 2D cell cultures with uh, 3D spheroids, tumor spheroids, of pancreatic cancer cells. Um, and as I said, the background really was the uh, initial toxicity screening that I will um, mention uh, very shortly. So uh, the cell lines that we used were BXPC3, which is a chemosensitive cell line, and PANC1, um, with KRAS mutations, which is a chemo-resistant cell line. 
We use three different formulations of nanodiamonds with different surface functional groups, including these pegylated nanodiamonds. These uh, materials were produced by the company PlasmaChem, um, and both uh, my lab and also PlasmaChem uh, were partners of this EU project, FP7 project Nano Solutions. Um, these nanodiamonds were, were included in a large panel of different nanomaterials that we, we had screened uh, in that project. These are TM images showing um, partially the, showing the, the tumor spheroids of BXPC3 cells. Um, more organized, uh, uh, and the PANC-1 tumor spheroids, somewhat more disorganized uh, um, as, uh, architecture, as you can see. To start off then with the, the screening uh, for cytotoxicity, we used the human monocyte-derived macrophages, as shown here, or the THP1 monocytic uh, cell line, as shown here. Uh, we used a range of different concentrations, up to 100 microgram per ml. There's no toxicity for either of the three nanodiamonds in either of these two cell types. Um, this is a, a cluster diagram uh, based on profiling of cytokines and chemokines. And, and so um, these are the more than, more than 30 different nanomaterials we had tested in the NanoSolutions project, including the nanodiamonds down here. Um, but uh, this panel included multi-world carbon nanotubes, uh, quantum dots, uh, gold, silver, and, and, uh, and etc., and nanodiamonds. We then screened for more than 20 different cytokines and chemokines, and, and the bottom line really is that uh, the nanodiamonds didn't trigger any pro-inflammatory cytokines whatsoever. These are data from THP1 cells. We have um, similar data for the primary cells. We also decided to test whether uh, there was any difference in cytotoxicity in presence or absence of serum. Now, primary macrophages are not the best model uh, to do this, but we used a, another cell line, PLB985, which can be um, differentiated into macrophage-like cells. These were grown without um, serum in, in the cell culture medium or in the presence of 10% serum. And, and as you can see, at the highest concentrations, 50, and, and in particular at 100 microgram per ml, there is uh, a cytotoxicity for, for uh, the nanodiamonds, that, but there are differences between the three nanodiamonds. Um, if we look at 50 microgram per ml, only, only the carboxylated nanodiamonds show some cytotoxicity, pegylated and amine functionalized are non-toxic. Uh, all of this toxicity is reversed in the presence of serum. Uh, moving now to the pancreatic cancer cell uh, uh, models, these are now uh, TM images of 3D tumor spheroids. These are uh, control cells, and here exposed, in this case, to pegylated nanodiamonds. We see uh, uptake or internalization of large agglomerates of nanodiamonds. These are PANC1 cells, and, and uh, less uptake, in actually, for the BXPC3 cells. Here is an agglomerate of nanodiamonds outside um, the tumor spheroid. And just to, to uh, I, I try to summarize in this slide, we, we see more uptake of nanodiamonds in 2D. Here is one example of cells grown in 2D, pegylated nanodiamonds inside the cell. Um, and we see more uh, internalization into PANC1 spheroids as the, compared to the BXPC3 spheroids. What is also interesting is that w the uptake or, or, or penetration was mostly confined to the outer layers of the tumor spheroids and not, uh, by TM at least, we could not really detect uh, much nanodiamonds in the core of, of the tumor spheroids. Uh, we also looked at, at drug loading and drug release, and we used doxorubicin not because it is the um, uh, most typical drug for pancreatic cancer treatment, but simply as a model drug and has previously been shown to, to be um, loaded to nanodiamonds and it's fluorescent. This is just to show that um, in the presence or absence of serum that we have differences in, in release of, of doxorubicin. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, car carboxylated nanodiamonds don't really release the, the, um, as much, but for the pegylated and, and the amine functionalized, there is a difference uh, with or without serum. Overall, um, looking at both drug loading and drug release, the pegylated nanodiamonds had the best profile um, in terms of optimal drug loading and also release. As I said, the carboxylated particles, they load the drug, they don't release it. Um, we also found drug retention um, in cells. These are now uh, cells grown in 2D, the two different cell lines shown here. Um, this is the amount of doxorubicin after exposure of the cells to free drug versus doxorubicin um, conjugated to the three nanodiamonds. So there is a significant increase in retention of the drug within the cell. 
And then we tested for cell killing, measured as uh, ATP levels uh, in the cells, uh, uh, but either in 2D or in 3D spheroids. These data are uh, taken at 24 hours of exposure, either to free drug um, or to the drug conjugated to carboxylated or pegylated nanodimers, in this case, in 2D and in 3D. And there is no added benefit of conjugating the drug to the nanodiamonds at this time point. If we look at 48 hours, um, again, really no difference. At, after three days of, of culture, we do see that the um, doxorubicin nanoparticle nanodiamond conjugates are more efficient in killing at the equivalent amount or dose of doxorubicin as opposed to free drug. Um, so more dead cells here than here. And we then went on uh, one step further. This is at 96 hours. And indeed, we do see that there is um, a benefit of, of having the nanodiamond, in this case, pegylated nanodiamond doxorubicin conjugates at equivalent doses of doxorubicin. Um, we do see significantly more killing for the nanodiamond conjugates uh, as opposed here to the free drug. Um, these are just nanodiamonds uh, alone to show that they are not actually killing the pancreatic cancer cells. So to summarize, um, we have found that nanodiamonds with different surface modifications are, are non-cytotoxic for primary human macrophages and for other um, uh, macrophage monocytic cells. Um, we have found that, that uh, these peg pegylated nanodiamonds conjugated with doxorubicin are more efficient in killing pancreatic cancer cells if the cells are grown in 3D as tumor spheroids. We don't see this added benefit of, of the nano delivery system if the cells are grown in conventional 2D. Now I need to add that these tumor spheroids do not have a stromal cell component, so that would be the next step to try to incorporate the stromal cell component in those models. We are also, together with our colleagues at the Mayo Clinic, planning to use to, to, to do patient-derived tumor spheroids to have more personalized um, ex vivo models. We think that this uh, effect that we have seen could be due to uh, in increased penetration, if not all the way into the core, but nevertheless penetration into the spheroid, allowing for a sustained release of the drug. Uh, I was a bit optimistic when I wrote this. I said experiments are underway. Actually, we are planning to do in vivo studies uh, of these um, pegylated nanodiamond doxorubicin conjugates. And just to, to, to finish off, this has been a collaboration between the Mayo Clinic and Karolinska Institute. That, um, Audrey and Stephanie in my lab have done the toxicity testing. Maria, together with Anil, from Professor Mukopade's lab uh, at the Mayo Clinic have done all the work on the pancreatic cancer models. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. So other questions? Uh, several. Thank you, Brent. Um, so the drug uh, loading capacity of your particles, is that um, a limiting factor ultimately how much doxyrubinson or is it um, uh, an unlimited quantity because ultimately in terms of dosimetry um, for a therapeutic yes. nanoparticle that's going to become yes, yes. an important entity. I think, I think you touched uh, uh, directly on a very important question. In fact, um, and I didn't show you uh, the results on drug loading uh, uh, per se, but, but indeed the, with these preliminary results that I have shown you, um, in order to achieve uh, uh, the amount of drug that, that I, uh, and the effect that I've shown you here, we had to use nanodiamonds that are um, the, uh, a concentration of nanodiamonds that begin to approach the level of, of cytotoxicity for macrophages. So, so um, we need to look at ways to optimize drug loading. And, and uh, um, we are also, together with Professor Mukopadi, looking at whether we could have uh, targeted nanodiamonds so pegylated and uh, uh, with an added targeting ligand. Um, so these are really preliminary results, but this is a, a, an important point. And, and uh, um, I think that there's still potentially an added value of, of having these uh, uh, nanodiamond drug conjugates because of this uh, apparent sustained release within the cells or within the spheroids. So, um, but, but uh, we need to, to, uh, to do more work on the, on the optimization of drug loading, yes. Two short questions. 
Uh, one, uh, do you know the mechanism how uh, the particles or the doxorubicin is entering into cytosol? And the second, are these particles biodegradable? Okay, uh, both good questions. Um, we have not specifically looked at the mechanism of uptake um, or indeed release uh, of the drug from the particles following uptake. When we look by electron microscopy, it appears that these large agglomerates of nanodiamonds are in, in membrane uh, enclosed vesicles suggesting endocytosis. I didn't mention this, and perhaps I should have started off by mentioning that the primary particle size of these nanodiamonds is around five nanometers, but by, by uh, DLS measurements uh, in cell culture medium, they are more uh, likely to be 100 or 150 nanometers uh, agglomerates. In the presence of doxorubicin or after loading of doxorubicin, they approach micrometer size agglomerates. Um, this is just a, a, a remark to say that um, being, uh, it, it's more important to have the right size than to have nano size, I think. And so, so what we find here is that the particles are not necessarily behaving as nano sized objects when they enter the cells, but they appear to be loose agglomerates of, of particles and able to release uh, the drug. The second question, very briefly then, I know we are running out of time, is that we have started to look at whether these materials are biodegradable. Um, we have not yet been able to master the Raman spectroscopy of nanodiamonds in cells because of disturbances um, uh, or overlap with other, with other signals. But we have shown that both carbon nanotubes and graphene oxide is degradable. Um, it will be very interesting to see if nanodiamonds are degradable. Perhaps diamonds are not forever. Yeah, over here. Um, I've come along to this talk because some years ago I was traveling in Eastern Europe and uh, I heard a presentation really of some work very similar to this, in fact, slightly different chemistry. Um, more intriguingly, they had actually put this into man uh, and uh, I won't say what country it was in, but uh, probably uh, you might have better get imagined. But they claim some very potent anti-cancer effects in man. Uh, I think, it, if my memory is right, an ovarian cancer. And I was intrigued by this, but also dismissive, if you see what I mean. I wasn't sure whether this was real data or not. Mm. And uh, I don't know whether you'd uh, come across this data and whether perhaps you might be interested in taking... I still have some contact from Christmas every Christmas from these, this team, yes. whether you'd be interested in so, evaluating them. So the, I, I would be interested in taking a, look, uh, taking a look. I'm not familiar with the data. Um, the uh, original description of nanodiamonds was made by Soviet scientists Correct. at the time. Correct. And, and this these is are, not exactly this, nanodiamonds. I'm yes. forgetting the chemistry. It's close. Yes. Um, and I know how it's made. These nanodiamonds, is, in which I also didn't mention, are produced by detonation. So, yeah, so this, this material is also made yes. by detonation. So, so um, but what I can say is that uh, having over the last, well, several years looked at, I think in my lab probably in excess of 200 different nanoparticle formulations, these, are, these nanodiamonds are surprisingly inert and non-toxic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they seem to, to really have the, uh, the effects that I described, which is to retain mm. the drug within the cells and, and, and yet not produce toxicity in and of themselves. I would be very interested to see. I, I, I would try and make a, a link through me. Yes, and yes. Uh, we, uh, it's, an, it's a hook I've never managed to close, really. Yes, you know, yes. link, uh, and I was very intrigued. Thank you very Thank much. You.